by fellow Catholics. I am here to present to you proof that the Vatican in the year 2000, when they released the third secret of Fatima, what they released was a fake document. It was a forgery for sure. So I need you to bear with me and this is going to be a very short video because the evidence is very simple and very direct. But as we look through the website at the Vatican uh, for the message of Fatima, you can scroll down and they have, uh, it was poorly scanned and I'm sure that was done on purpose. But they have the copies of the actual letters that Sister Lucia wrote. Now, they're in a GIF format, first of all, which is odd. And it's a transparent GIF. So there's no background. So when you uh, see the letter, it's an image. And if you were to... Uh, right click on the image you can view it and it'll be a, a gif file format very very basic very simple and very hard to read so i can read portuguese fairly well and um it's my native language and uh when i and i've read this many a times or at least I've tried to read it uh, you know I always have to go to the translation because the the um, resolution is so poor which I'm sure they did that on purpose but when we look right there at the date of 1917 that is all you need to know that it is a forgery and I'm going to explain to you why that is so and before we Going any further, let's just look at the two documents here, side by side. The beginning of the, both documents, the first secret and the second secret. There's clearly a difference in handwriting. I mean, you don't have to be an expert. Clearly a difference in handwriting. But the seven, the 1917, the numbers written on the third part of the secret. The seven is not crossed. Now, in Portuguese, there's the seven is what's called traçado, which means it's crossed. When you write in cursive in Portuguese, you always cross the seven. And there's a reason for that. But th the point I want to make is that Sister Lucia learned how to read and write in the 20s, Pro prefer probably shortly around 1918, 1919, when she started. But we can say that in the 20s, she is when that is when she learned to read and write. Now, in Portuguese, and I myself was educated, the first eight years of my life was in Portuguese in the 70s. Even in the 70s, when we wrote cursive, you had to cross the sevens. It is mandatory. It's ruler on the back of your hand if you don't cross your seven type of requirement. Now, when you look at print or newspapers or you know computer generation, those anything that's uh, mechanical, those were no, normally not crossed. And the reason for that is because the typesets were usually clear enough that you could tell that it was a seven. But in Portuguese, the tradition, traditional way of writing, the number seven is always crossed. And the reason for that is very simple. The reason for that is that to make sure it is distinguished between the number one and the number seven when you are writing cursive. Because the number one and the number seven without the seven being crossed can easily be mistaken for one or the other. Now, here's a couple of examples that I showed you that I found on 
uh, online, just to give you an example that is still being used today. I mean, I myself, to this very day, I'm 48 years old, I still cross my sevens when I write cursive every time because it's ingrained in you. It is impossible not to cross your seven. My parents, which were both still alive, my grandmother, still alive, and my mother-in-law, all of them still cross their sevens. Even though they're in America now, they still cross the sevens. It is impossible, once you learn it, to get rid of it. It can happen if you move to another country and you get kind of used to it, but the chances of that are very slim. It's like asking you to stop dotting your eye. So, when we look at this document that was uh, posted by the Vatican and we look at that date of 1917 this is a forged document this is a hoax this is fake Sister Lucia would never write this without crossing the seven she learned to read and write by the request of our Blessed Mother and she would have learned it perfectly so that she would know how to convey it. I even found a letter from Bishop De Silva that she that was sent to the then President Salazar where he's quoting something that Sister Lucia said in another letter. But you can see how you write the seven. It's a, it's a line up, line to the right, and then line back down, and then you cross it. Sister Lucia's writing, whoever wrote this document in 2000 was not Portuguese. They may have known how to write in Portuguese, but they were not Portuguese. Once you learn the proper way of writing a seven, you never, ever forget. And Sister Lucia would still have crossed that seven. Those of you listening to this may think, what is that doesn't mean anything. It means everything. It is an impossibility that she would write that document and not cross her seven, especially because it is right next to the number one. That is the main reason you would cross a seven is because you're right next. You don't want to mix it up with the number one. So she wouldn't want the letter to say 1911. She would want to be 1917. Which brings me to another point. It's very interesting that in the, this particular third document, she starts off the letter with you know, a date and a time and a place. But in the first part of the secret, nothing. It's just She just starts talking about the secret. But I guess that's a different story. But again, either way, whoever wrote this document was not Portuguese. They may have known how to write Portuguese, but they were not Portuguese because in Portuguese, you always, always cross the seven. Even in Brazil, most people still cross the seven. It's just the way the language is when you're writing cursive. But typewriters were imported they didn't have the seven crossed, but they're, you can distinguish them easily when it's on the typeset mechanical instrument. But cursive handwriting, it's very easy to mistake a one for a seven, and that is the main reason why the sevens are always crossed in Portuguese. Now, in the last 10 to 15 years, I'm sure that has waned quite a bit, but the, those that were instructed in the old ways still do it. You don't lose it. You don't stop it. It's not normal Portuguese writing. And that is 100% proof that that letter was not written by Sister Lucia. It is a fake and a forgery through and through. Now, this proves at least in, from my point of view, one very important thing, one that I've, written, I've talked about in previous videos. 
the contents of the third secret of Fatima were never meant for the laity. It was the fact that the Vatican was given a task and they refused that task. And that task was uh, start was supposed to start on a specific date, 1960. The contents of that document, which was a message sent from our Lord through Our Lady, the contents of that, our Lord is the one that gave it to us. So when he sent that message, he knew all along that it would not be read for 50 years. So the message of the third secret or the third part is not the contents of the third secret. Maybe you've heard the term, the medium is the message. Okay, it's an advertising term. In other words, what you, the how you present it tells you more, tells people more about the product than the message itself. The third secret of Fatima was a clear and distinctive warning from our Lord about Vatican II and Pope John the Twenty Third. And this document now that looking at it is a clear forgery. There is no possible, it's not an improbability, it's an impossibility that Sister Lucia would write that document and not cross the seven. The third secret of Fatima, whatever the contents may be in there, and I'm sure if we knew about it, it would be a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But the contents of the third secret were never meant for the laity. It was clearly for the clergy which has them scared like crazy because they don't want to talk about it. This is just more confirmation. The third secret of Fatima was a warning about the clergy and especially now with Vigano and everything else, the whole thing's imploding. Our Blessed Mother has to be coming soon to remedy, remedy all this. Anyone that doesn't, can't see that has got to be blind. Blessed Mother, please pray for us. Lord Jesus, come soon.